Hello, and welcome to the Data Studio Jupyter Lab video module, which is part of the NHLBI Biodata Catalyst powered by Seven Bridges onboarding lessons. While following along to this video, please keep in mind some key concepts. The first is that interactive Data Studio sessions allow you to perform analyses without downloading data. Second, Data Studio allows you to save the outputs of analyses to your project space. And third, one of the computing environments offered for Data Studio is Jupyter Lab. In this video, we will be using Jupyter Lab with Python as the computational environment. At the end of this video, you will be able to create a new Data Studio instance using the Jupyter Lab environment, import a file from your BDC project, and modify and save that file to your BDC project. Before we begin, I'm going to explain the directory structure of the Seven Bridges Cloud instance inside a Data Studio session. The file structure looks like this. Slash svgenomics is the root directory for the instance, and it has subdirectories output-files, project-files, and workspace. svgenomics slash project-files is where your files are located and can be accessed from. This directory is read-only, not writable. svgenomics slash output-files is writable, and it is where you should save files to have them show up in your files view or be accessible for apps. SVGenomics slash workspace is the special directory created for interactive sessions. This directory is read and write, but files here are not accessible to apps. The files here are directly accessible to the Data Studio session. This fourth directory that I didn't mention, projects, actually leads to the same location as project-files, but by a longer file path, so the project files directory is provided for convenience. As you can see, I'm already logged into Biodata Catalyst powered by Seven Bridges, and I will open the project that I've created for this tutorial called Jupyter Lab Python Data Studio Tutorial. Here on this project dashboard are the steps I will be taking in my demo. We will navigate to Data Studio, create a new Data Studio instance using the Jupyter Lab environment import a file from our BDC project files, modify and save that file back to this project. This demo uses a very large file size, six gigabytes, in order to demonstrate how to choose a computing instance with adequate resources for large files. Let's begin by finding the Data Studio tab here in the project navigation bar. The first thing that I need to do is create a new analysis. You'll see three environment options here. Select Jupyter Lab. We're going to name this new analysis Demo Python. And the first choice we get to make is in the environment setup. In the environment setup here, we have a few options for different pre installed tools, including a TensorFlow environment for machine learning and the picture environment for integration with Biodata Catalyst powered by picture. For now, we are going to use the SB Data Science Python 3.11 R4.31 default environment. The next option is choosing an instance type. For this demo, in addition to showing you how to start up and interact with the Jupyter Lab cloud environment, I am also going to demonstrate loading an extremely large text file into my data studio. My text file is a randomly generated table with 8 million rows and 200 columns, and it is six gigabytes in size. Even though Python is good at memory management, working with a file this size will need some extra RAM. So I'm going to choose an instance from the R instance family. R families are RAM biased. They have more memory than others. I'm gonna type in R5 dot 2X large will give me 64 gigabytes of RAM at 50 cents per hour. I do not need as much attached storage as is default, and I will set that to 500 gigabytes. And then the last option here is the suspend time. Clicking the tooltip, I see the suspend time is the period of inactivity after which the instance is stopped automatically and the analysis is saved. We do not recommend turning off the suspend time. You may set the suspend time for as long as 120 minutes, but this is a cost guardrail. After 30 minutes of inactivity, this session will gracefully stop and save my space.
after clicking start, the environment needs time to initialize. This can sometimes take three minutes. So we will use the magic of video editing to speed through this. Now that the environment has started up, I can guide you through what you see here. Uh, usually the first time you start a new environment, you'll get this little pop-up. I go ahead and close that. The launcher of the JupyterLab Data Studio environment includes notebooks for Python, Julia, Pluto, and R. Today we're gonna be working in Python. And so I will open a Python notebook by clicking here. If you want to open a different kind of thing, you actually can have several tabs open at one time in a Jupyter Lab session. I can click this plus button, see my launcher again, and now I want to open a terminal window. This gives me a bash prompt that lets me interact with the virtual machine's Linux environment. The file that I want to work with is um, actually located in my project files directory. If we type ls here we see only this file untitled.ipynb but if we change directories to slash svgenomics slash project dash files we'll actually see the large random data that i want we can get the file size here it is six gigabytes i'm actually going to copy this file to my workspace to make it available to my IPython notebook. I actually had to stop and come back to this. So I'm going to come over to the IPython notebook. We can see that my large random data CSV is here in my workspace because it's over in the left hand side. And I've already typed some things into my notebook. We're gonna use pandas to um, be able to read this file in as a data frame. And I have specified my file path. This is where this CSV is located. And now when I read this file into a data frame, it will take about two and a half minutes. So again, we'll use the magic of video editing. One advantage of an IPython notebook in Jupyter Lab is that while the kernel is busy, it will show you that it is still doing something with this black circle being fully shaded in. Once it is finished, that circle will be an empty white circle. And there we go. So now that this has been read into memory, we can check the shape of it and then modify it and write it back out to a file. We will use df.shape to get the dimensions of this data frame, 8 million rows, 200 columns. And then just to modify it so that we can resave it, we'll take a slice out of it. I'll do new df equals df.iloc, indexed location. We'll take just the first 4 million rows, one, two, three, four, five, six, and maybe just the first 10 columns. This shouldn't take too long. In fact, it's instantaneous. And now we just need to write this new data frame out to our output files. I'm going to do this kind of the same way I did it uh, to import it, I will do out file path equals SV genomics output dash files modified random data dot CSV. That just gives me the file path. And I will use the to CSV method new df dot to underscore CSV open paren out file path separator is a comma 
index equals false. I'll hit control enter. That only takes six seconds. So I might as well go ahead and rename my little file here. And now we can hit stop and that will actually save this file to our project files. All right, there we go. My modified random data is written here in outputs. We could click on it here to open up its file page and look at it. We can also go to files and see that it is now present in my project files. We click on it. We can see that it's still quite, quite a large file. It's 76 megabytes. Um, we can also see that it is just my random data with only 10 columns. To recap, Data Studio allows you to perform analyses on the cloud using your preferred analysis environment. Data Studio also allows you to save the outputs of your analysis to your projects on BDC 7 Bridges so that they're available to use with other apps and workflows. And JupyterLab is a web-based IDE for Python that is integrated into BDC 7 Bridges. Thanks for watching.